Thank you for watching the Whittemore Community Magazine's Hour of Power Live on Facebook with your host Edward McQueen and April Garner. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I'm your host. Look, look, the guest can't wait to say good evening. I mean, she's she's ready. <laughs> she, move over a little bit, Miss Winifred, so we can all see you. Yeah, there you go. So we can you know, see your beautiful face. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Good evening to all. Um, uh, it, it's been a heck of a week, but we hope to cover everything that happened all last week. Anything is bad that happened. Uh, because we got some good information for you and some some good history that you should have been uh, learning a long time ago. Uh, but I'm your host, Ed McQueen, co-host, Sister April Garner from the capital of Conway. Straight from the capital. Sugar Hill, all <laughs> day, every day. <laughs> every day. <laughs> every day. <laughs> That's a nice place. Everybody's going to be wanting to go to Sugar Hill before it's over with. <laughs> ah, that's a long story. That's a long story. But uh, as, uh, we want to recommend everybody to our program and uh, hope we'll keep dispensing some information that um, <coughs> of particular interest to everybody, you know, every, every gender, every age group. All day, every day. So, and um, so we just start off with our, uh, sending our condolences as far as we can, since we're worldwide now, you know, we've got some, got, got a lot of feedback from all over the nation here, so, um, but we usually try to send our condolences and, and our prayers out to our, uh, uh, the jurisdictions that are locally, okay, it's just, it's just a tradition, okay, so we start with, try to go alphabetically and it trips up at the time. <laughs> so, we'll go with uh, Angler and, um, help me out, April. Uh, uh, Bayboro, Burgess, Cool Bay Springs, yeah, Cool yeah. Springs, um, uh, Bucksport, Bucksville, Green oh. Sea. Boy, she's doing good. <laughs> <laughs> you can't tell you that. Charleston. Yeah, there you go. Charlotte. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's a good one, Charlotte. Yes. Charlotte. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They're, they're coming in. Yeah. Charlotte. DC. I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't say Washington, but everybody knows what DC is. Mm -hmm. Virginia. Virginia. Yeah. Florida. Yeah. Texas. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, but Miami in particular down there in Florida, this has got a lot of feedback from those people. Really? Okay. And everybody uh, for their um, compliments and so forth about our program. So we continue on with, you know, uh, Shopee, Planetsville. Mm -hmm. Place people never, you know, you don't hear about a whole lot. A lot going on down there, though. Chow Peak, Andy Village, Jackson Village, Georgetown, Polly's Island, Island, Merle's Inlet. Oh, yeah. Andrews. Yes. Williamsburg County. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. a mighty county. That's a mighty county. Mm -hmm. uh, Come back north, Tabor City, Whiteville. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> oh, Little River. Chesterfield area over there. Yeah. Poppy. Popular, mm -hmm. and they're getting popular. Yes, Little River, mm -hmm. Big River. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what we know that. Yeah, uh, wait, uh, North North Merle Beach, North Santee, Papasti, Paul Island. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, oh, yes, you can chime in if you want. Uh, you were down there somewhere down there. Fine. Y'all doing this fine. <laughs> doing this fine. <laughs> It's all right. Sound off. Sound off. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Well, we, okay. We'll uh, um, I want to continue on with, with our program, but, but for those of you that we you feel left out, just uh, write in our comments there on on your screen um, and tell us where we what we're doing wrong or of the fact that we left you out. We certainly want to hear about that. Okay. So, um, well, welcome to want to welcome you to our program again, and. Um, April and I um, have been, um, I like to say, working pretty hard trying to maintain a consistent uh, program with involving guests. And a lot of times it's not easy. 
uh, but we do get some exciting uh, uh, guests around a lot, and we have to uh, vet uh, uh, or vet. We have to vet. You know, I'm just trying to be real, okay? Vet some of our, our guests, but um, but we, but when we when we come out and the filtering process is uh, is acceptable, we have some very good guests. So uh, today, um, we have uh, with us. As you all can see on your screen, uh, Ms. Winfred Anderson and Good evening, Ms. Angel. Uh, Ms. Anderson, uh, look, we're going to talk about um, uh, the black nurses, the history of black nurses in Conway. That's mm -hmm. the one we want to talk to, talk about, and the shortage uh, that we feel today at, at most hospitals, okay? Let's, uh, before I get to you, Winfred, um, and I'd like you to talk, uh, I'd like you to just uh that that you know that uh, i had some conversation with uh the administrator of the Conway medical center the brett bar and um one of the topics we talked about was uh the need for more uh black nurses it's just just that emphatic okay and um he he, he he thought he presented all the challenges that they're having um and all the obstacles that, that they, they have they're facing in order to get someone get some small black nurses and uh we want to go over that today also if you don't mind uh so um ms anderson who is it i'd like to say this myself she's a registered nurse <laughs> retired registered nurse retired from the convent medical center is that correct that was my last place of employment and she and said she's retired, but she will never retire. She's one. Of the, so we're going to find out what she means by that today. So welcome to the program, um, Ms. Anderson. And uh, if you, you have any additional things that you want the, the audience to know before we start getting on the topic, so let them a little bit, little bit about your background. Uh, yes. First of all, let me thank you as the host and uh, April Nisi, uh, the hostess for inviting me to be here to share some information with you all and the listening audience. Um, particularly, I want to start with some history, especially with Conway Hospital, because Conway Hospital was one of the first hospitals established here in Ory County uh, in the early 1920s. Uh, and the first uh, place of business was down on Elm Street and then uh, on Buck. But then the hospital itself was segregated. Um, there was a sign facing Ninth Avenue where you entered, but the sign specifically said whites only. There was the black entrance facing the Buck Street that was the colored entrance. And the black ward was for the black patients. So the black ward for the black patients had black nurses, black orderlies and black nursing assistants. And some of the persons that headed those units was my mentor, the person I tried to imitate, Nurse Ida Hughes was one of the persons that was a charge nurse on the unit Miss Annie Hickman and Miss Isabel Laws were the RNs, the registers that would head the unit. There were other nurses um, that came in that were just wonderful because they had to do what they had to do, but who they had to do it with. Um, we called her Nurse Lee, but she was Miss Marion Wright, Nurse Marion Lee Wright. Right, Lee Wright. right, right. Miss Ellie's Spain, who was a practical, licensed practical, also a midwife. We had also Miss uh, Elmira Connor. We had um, Ruth Burgess. And we had um, uh, some of the other nurses that came in um, because the nursing schools were limited. Um, and for a while, there was no nursing school that had any black students. 
And um, there was a house over on Buck Street that they used. It had two stories for training the students. And there were some early black uh, student nurses that attended that school and did graduate. And in one of those, uh, Miss Burgess and Alice Smith and Mary Alice Friday and some of the others that graduated as our uh, practical nurses. Miss Burgess there, when she graduated, Miss Ruth Burgess, she was in the class of 63 and was one of the only blacks in that class, but graduated with honors. She uh, received the Nursing Excellency Award in that class and still living, still functioning, and uh, is still proud of being a nurse. She's and the nurse on the right there, right? On the right. Ms. Burgess, looking at your screen, she's on the left. On the left, okay. Ms. Dorothy Woodbury is, was one of our unit secretaries, but later. But Ms. Burgess was in uh, one of the first classes, graduating classes over at the School of Nursing. And then it, after several years, it closed for a while and then reopened again. But um, we had uh, Ms. Jackie Frazier that came in uh, later and uh, Ms. Mozilla Bell. But the hospital at that time mm -hmm. was like a fabric that's so woven tightly together until their dining room, the colored dining room was a room that was for storage of food, non-perishable foods, but a table was placed there and that's where they, eat. they ate, it wasn't even a window. Um, and then asking them, because this went on until um, the late sixties um, when the hospitals were segregated, why did you eat there? There wasn't a sign on the door that said colored employees, white employees were across the hall in the larger dining room. They said, no, there was never a sign, but that's where we, where we ate. Mm. And the people that came to Orient, a new employee would say, this is, if they were black, this is where you eat. But there was never a sign saying that they had to eat there. It was just that every black person that worked for the hospital, that's where they ate in that storage room until the hospital was segregated and that room was made to be what it was made for, the pantry storage for the hospital. Ms. Winifred, yes. what, was it just kind of understood that that's where you all were to eat? I mean, did anyone, any of the white employees ever invite you to come and eat with them? Even if they did, I understand because they would have felt so strange that they never even asked or wanted. They all stayed across the hall in that storage room and that's where they had their meals until the hospital was segregated. And I asked, I said, if it wasn't a sign and nobody said you had to, why did you? It's because we wanted to. They want, okay, all right. They wanted to, hmm. they wanted to, hmm. they wanted to. And so, um, like I say, Ms. Hughes, Nurse Hughes, Ms. Annie Hickman and all the others, they were so profound and so dedicated with so much integrity for the profession that they made steps, foundations that was so strong that anyone that wanted to follow in the profession itself, they paved the way. They paid, we didn't have to ride on their shoulders. They made the foundation so deep that we could follow we could follow. And then those steps that we could build on were building for others to go higher and higher. Mm -hmm. yeah, but for some reason, um, and I remember Ms. Isla Hughes because she was, she was my, my neighbor, okay? 
um, when whenever she would give me a shot, it never hurt. But if somebody else gave me a shot, <laughs> it's your imagination. Yeah, you know, your imagination. No, it, it, it wasn't gonna hurt you. But go um, ahead, yeah. go ahead, Mr. Mr. McQueen. What were you gonna say? I I just thought it was the soul of the needle. You know, it just. But she, yeah. you know, I wish she was so jealous about, it. and she thought I was so young. You know, and and you know, and she probably talked to you. Yeah, and talked to you and to because <laughs> in our little village down on Spivey Alley, Miss mm -hmm. Miss uh, Miss Wright, Homer Wright's mother, when we got to the point we wanted our ears pierced, she pierced everybody ears. She just set you down. And she would start talking to you and doing your ears like this until it got numb and took that numb number uh, uh that thread and needle number eight and before you know it knew it your ears were pierced. And who was that Miss uh, Wright? Homer Wright's mother. Oh okay. Emily Wright. Mm -hmm. So we had everything in the village on there. But one other thing. The hospital then, we had one doctor. Dr. Kelly was a primary physician. He was. He was the obstetrical doctor. Uh, he was everything. Mm -hmm. But because the ward was a colored ward, when he, he would go upstairs to deliver the baby, but the baby and the mother had to come back, and that mother had to be in a room with another patient. She couldn't stay upstairs. Mm -hmm. They brought her back down to the colored ward. And sometimes the wards would be so filled till we had beds in the hallway. Mm. And of course, when, when she mentions Dr. Kelly, she means Dr. Peter C. Kelly. Dr. Peter C. Kelly. Dr. Peter C. Yeah. Kelly. The and yeah. only. The the one only. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, during the night when you made rounds, before the flashlight, it was a candle. Then it was the flashlight then two nurses walked to make rounds, all the rounds with the flashlight. Two had to go together for safety issues. And we evolved from that. The medications were not, of course, like they were then, they were in big bottles. We had to use the mercury thermometers, you mm. shoot the mercury thermometers, we put them in septosol. Uh, they had to sit in the septosol for so long and went to a place called Central Processing. And Ms. Ivy Ruth Pertel worked in Central Processing. So yeah, everybody used everybody's thermometer. Just after we took your temperature, it went it not the, the same thermometer, but it wasn't disposable. Very few things right. were disposable. We mm -hmm. washed the bedpans with mops, wool hand mops. A glove was a treasure. Uh, was that just on the colored ward or was that all over the all hospital? Over, all over. All and over the hospital. No so disposable, there's... no disposable. They had the temperatures upstairs on the other floors, put them in septosol. Somebody from Central Processing came, got them. When they came back, they came in little packets, individual packets. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think my first recollection of being in the presence of a nurse was uh, seeing Ida. And, uh, you know, of course, she would come to my grandmother's house and my we, my brother and I would be at my grandma, my grandmother Rosa would mm -hmm. be at her house. And um, if I'm not mistaken, wasn't Ida in the military? Yes, she was. And, and, and that discipline mm -hmm. and that integrity, uh, she walked through the door and she just oozed it because you know, it's almost like when she walked through the door, you just sat up straight. <laughs> she you know, disrespected her so much. You know, you respect her so much. She walked in with authority. Exactly. Exactly. And exactly. things took, she, it was a controlling situation. And that's the kind of nurse she was. Mm -hmm. If you came to the desk on the colored ward and she was there and you wanted to visit someone and you started down to that person's room and for some means or whatever you saw she she would say didn't i say you go <laughs> yeah she was a military nurse, mm -hmm. nurse. 
What well, was she a uh, supervising uh, capacity at that there? Oh yeah, she she was she and uh, Miss Is Isabel Laws and Miss Annie Hickman could be what they called the charge head, while the upper supervisor, one of the highest right. levels right. to entrust the units with and the patients and the employees worked under their supervision. Mm -hmm. I just want to remind our viewers and first of all, thank our viewers for being with us today. This is already an intriguing conversation. We're just a few minutes into it. Uh, but if you post your comments and questions in the thread, we will uh, share those comments and questions with, I'm calling her Miss Winifred on, on air, but I've always known her as Sister Anderson. <laughs> okay. Sister Anderson. And, um, and, and you know, share the comments and questions so she can answer them for you. And there's a couple, if you don't mind, I'd like to go into. Okay. A couple of questions. Sure. Okay. All right. So someone wants to know, where did you go to nursing school? I started school um, when the Conway Practical School opened again after it was closed for several years. And because I had, I was a single parent and I needed a job that could pay me a salary to work because I knew I was going back to school. So I went there and I, I graduated from the Conway School of Practical Nursing, took the boards and um, what they call national when you talk whatever was the requirements. Mm -hmm. And so then I worked five years at Conway Nursing Center and Nurse Hickman and I worked together, Nurse Lee Wright and I worked together. And then I, while I was going back to school, but at that time it was really a challenge and it was, it was also a stigma but the challenge was there was very few nursing schools that was available that you could re really, but then Coastal Carolina opened and there was one building, there was two buildings. So when I got the opportunity, I went back to Coastal and Coastal was a branch from U the University of South Carolina. So when mm -hmm. I graduated back in the eighties, after um, you know working, uh, I graduated uh, with a diploma uh, from the University of South Carolina, because that's where Coastal was um, branching out from. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So by the time you graduated from USC, how many years of nursing did you have under your belt? From the time I graduated from USC, I think when, oh, Lord, gee, <laughs> gee, gee, gee. You could probably <laughs> teach the classes at that point. <laughs> yeah, and I had, I had a, a chance offered to me to actually go over to Ana Conway Career Center, but yeah. you know, it was, it still seemed like, hey, always, you know, you have to prioritize your, the, the way you do things, mm -hmm. what is most important and priority and stuff like that. Yes. But yeah, but, so I, I, I struggled. It was a real challenge, challenge, but no, I went back and uh, went back and got a um, degree from the University of South Carolina School of Nursing. All right, so uh, go ahead, brother L. I was going to turn Yeah, go ahead with the thread. They will like on the okay. All right, so uh, there's another question on the thread. Uh, uh, she want uh, Janet Thompson wants to know whether or not you mentioned black nurses from Charleston that boycotted for better conditions. Um, do you remember that that happening? Nurses from I remember vaguely, vaguely but I don't remember it well enough to go into a conversation about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did you all ever boycott or protest or voice your, your... No, the only thing with the, you know, with the hospital, it was when it tried, the, the union came in and stuff like that, but any other particular boycott uh, about conditions or improvements, it, it it never was because see you understand that the hospital started with nurses like nurse hughes like nurse law and all those other nurses it wasn't and you will talk later i guess and could say now it wasn't until i say the thunder roared and the lightning struck mm -hmm. and the doors for education were made more readily and we could go back and uh, go to the schools schools of nursing because uh, dreams are dreams, but you have to uh, make reality 
a choice. You know, you have to do what to what you can do to make things real. So um, when the school opened, when Coastal opened, like I said, it was very few, few buildings, but there was a group of very energetic, enthusiastic, and very intelligent young women. There was Linda Wright, there was Linda Floyd Wright, <laughs> Rita Lady Stanley, Millicent Smalls, Connie Perkins, and still with Coastal being a small uh, college and just getting off of the ground, you had to take a bus from Conway to go up to Florence for your clinical. Ooh, wow. You had to go up to Florence for your clinical for your clinical assignments. You had to go up there, and uh, and and they use um Francis Marion mm -hmm. because Nurse Graham, who is my one of my best friends, mm -hmm. still we are best friends. Uh, Nurse Graham was a practical when she came to Conway. And she was determined that nothing was going to stop her from reaching her goal. She wanted to be a registered nurse. So Nurse Graham exempted the SAT and Nurse Graham enrolled in the School of Nursing. So Nurse Graham wasn't driving at the time so sometimes she would even, and I've taken her as far as Aner to meet a person in Aner that would drive on to Florence, but she was just that determined to be a registered nurse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And she is 95, I believe, right? Next birthday, she will be 96 years old. Wow. Oh. Wow. And she still, if she cannot reach me on my landline, she knows my number for my landline. She automatically calls my cell number. So she still remembers both numbers. Mm -hmm. and, and she told me she reads one book a day. She's an avid reader. Mm. In fact, when she was on duty working nights, she had always sometimes you have to be reminded, you can't have the book at the desk, Nurse Graham. You, you can't, <laughs> you don't have to put that book away now. You can't. Wow. You can't. But yeah, she's an avid reader. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, uh, and loyal, very loyal to the profession. Mm -hmm. yeah, and um, uh, yeah, and some other things I could share with you about, but I won't. I'll let you. <laughs> I'll let you. I'll let her tell you. <laughs> we have to invite Nurse Graham on here one day. You have to navigate. Oh, yeah. 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 Absolutely. yeah. Absolutely. There's another question in the thread, uh, and this is a, actually a good question. Uh, what do you know about midwives? What did they, yeah, what did they do? They have a list of things to talk about. Good, uh, good. Yeah. Um, at the Old Conway Hospital, Miss um, Ellie Spain was a, was one of the licensed practical, but also a midwife. Uh, um, so when Miss Spain was on duty, scheduled duty, and had a baby to deliver, she would have to get another nurse to work in her place for her to go deliver that baby. But we also had uh, midwives up until even in the uh, early 70s, there were still midwives like Miss uh, Amazon Dab, Miss uh, Elmina Ford, we all know, and Miss Anna Grice, and of course, Miss Sarah, Sarah Lloyd had her own little hospital within a hospital because in her home she had rooms the mothers in labor would come in and deliver and she would let them stay to recover in her home. Was that village? Yeah, that's what Miss Sarah Lloyd did. Was that village we had? That was part of the village. And Dr. Kelly's drugstore was right on the next corner from her house because she lived on 378 and his office was on 378. But um, yeah, Miss Sarah Lloyd would have um, her patients in labor come into her home and she had room set up in her home with the little water pitchers by their bed and took care of them. But um, 
and there may be others that I don't know of because I'm, I'm speaking a lot about some of the experiences that I had with the people that I had them with. But until the early 74s, when there was actually classes, I mean, I mean, college and university classes and medical classes to educate and license midwives. So there, there were midwives then in the hospital, on hospital staffs and so forth and so on. So it kind of phased out the old the old midwives. And so um, uh, someone told me that um, was close to a midwife in the past that uh, the midwives were responsible for the birth uh, information that was recorded. And sometimes um, depending on uh, what and what and um, it would um, depend on when they would get it down to have it actually recorded for some reasons, you know, I won't even uh, go into. And that um, hopefully all the midwives that had recorded birth information, it did get to the proper sources. Because I know a lot of people uh, be before, you know, my, my birth and all like that, said uh, they had problems even going to the courthouse getting information about their actual birth so i don't know you know how to record and when or whatever the circumstances were but um now we have midwives in hospitals and and uh, all kind of birthing places but it's a licensed profession so when you um when you were talking about uh how you know, there was a separate ward in the hospital for uh, the black nurses. And uh, there obviously was a lot of a segregation, you know, obviously there was segregation. How did the uh, white nurses and doctors treat all of you? And did they ever come in to help in times of need? Or was it just a part of the, the times that they just did not engage in any activity that involved uh, black people? Well, no, because there was a, a, a professional oath, you know, and um, the emergency room was a place you couldn't segregate anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, when the need arises because of the medical oath. Uh, but um, and then, like I say, that the segregation, segregation part came to pass because, like I say, there came a day when we had to come together but that stigma that stigma because um some patients would say oh, point blank i don't want a black nurse mm -hmm. they still do today <laughs> and, still um, and mm -hmm. yeah I, I just don't want a black nurse i don't mm -hmm. want a, um, a male nurse or this that and that and other mm -hmm. but um mm -hmm. the thing that was gratifying for me was um when the day a patient could put their nursing light on and say, I want to speak to the charge nurse. I want to speak to the charge nurse. And the charge nurse walked in, or uh, whoever was in charge, the charge nurse walked in, because that was the top on the unit, and that person was black. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they, they would say, well, I said I wanted to speak to the charge nurse <laughs> and you say well can i could I, what can i do what is the problem so you know that a, a change was coming a change was coming and those nurses i talked about earlier you know and there were others cheryl dennison and all all the others that came in and came out stood up and not stood back to bring on change. And there was many others because we all worked together, even though we weren't even in separate dining rooms, we still had a close relationship with one another, the nursing assistants, um, the aides, the orderlies, we all still had this sense that we're all in this together mm -hmm. kind of attitude. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, Brother Edward, let's, can we give Sister Anderson a break? Go to a commercial real quick. Let her catch. Yeah, yeah. She let her catch a little drink of water. <laughs> let her wear the whistle a little bit. Can we do that? Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Is that okay? Oh, yeah. uh, 
also want to know, um, because I don't know, you're probably not looking at my, I'm sending you text messages, Brother Edward, but uh, do we have the Black History Moment today? We have the Black History Moment, if time permits. Okay, all right, yeah. It'll be at the end, it'll be at the end okay? Oh, that's fine. Just wear it where you want to be. But uh, I'm going to go into a little commercial break now so that um, Sister Anderson can catch her breath and we'll be right back. Thank For you. all of your insurance needs, home, auto, and life, see how it feels to be on our number one team with Tony McAfee of State Farm Insurance. Call Tony at 843-903-7800 or visit him at 3888 Renee Drive in Myrtle Beach. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Looking to start a new career? Train to work in Myrtle Beach. Classes starting soon. Free to eligible participants. Short term, three weeks or less in hospitality, culinary, electrical, plumbing, and more. At Ori Georgetown Technical College, there's more. Continuing education at 843-477-2020. Ori Georgetown Technical College, where there's more. Enjoy soul food the way your mama made it. You'll be surrounded by some of the best food in Horry County and affordable prices. Blue plate specials, senior plates, and more. Daily specials at Big Mike Soul Food. Big Mike Soul Food is located at 504 16th Avenue in Myrtle Beach. You can call your order in at 843-712-2048 or visit BigMikeSoulFood.net to find out about the latest specials. Big Mike Soul Food. Soul food the way your mama made it. Treating conditions from A to Z. Schedule an appointment today. Ask about acceptable insurance coverage at Waccamaw Primary Care, 660 Singleton Ridge Road, Conway, South Carolina. Dr. Winston D. McIver Jr., a trusted and reputable source in Horry County and beyond, has all you need for family practice and sports medicine. Call 843-234-4362 to schedule your appointment today. Waccamaw Primary Care. 660 Singleton Ridge Road, Suite A, Conway, South Carolina, 843-234-4362. Family owned and operated since 2001, a veteran owned company. We're your number one property cleaning company serving Horry County and surrounding areas. Superior Window Cleaning has all that you need for residential and commercial property cleaning. Mention WCM Live and receive free window cleaning with power washing for up to 15 windows or free power washing for up to 200 square feet, flat work only, with any window cleaning job. Call 843-889-7255. That's 843-889-7255. And we're back. Welcome back. I love when you said that. Nurse Anderson? Good, fantastic. Yes. You got, you got a good rest. All right. Um, we, we, uh, April, we failed to mention that um, he was president of the NWC, local NWCC. We didn't fail to mention that. It didn't come up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it didn't come up, but we're, we're full of surprises here, I tell you. Yeah, no, right. I, is, she, is she the current? Are you the current president? I'm I'm serving right now. Serving right now, Conway this, Branch. This is the election year. If any of the the, the listening uh, listeners are interested, uh, you can <laughs> notify me uh, the branch to find out what the qualifications are. Mm -hmm. uh, because this is the year for all branches in the state of South Carolina to have their election for new officers. Okay. All right. Is that phone number for them to call? Yes. Uh, Eight four three. Two four eight four 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 eight. Eight four three two four eight four 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 eight. Mm -hmm. Oh, 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 all right. I, I, uh, yes. I, I just wanted to say uh, one thing about uh, another very good friend of mine, which was uh, Nurse Nurse Lee Wright, and I, I think you have a photo of Nurse Wright. What was this? What did you call it, Lee Wright? Yeah, that's all we called her when she first came. She was Nurse Lee, cause and then they would say Nurse Lee, and I didn't know her uh, her first name for a long time, Marion. Right. <laughs> but then she was Nurse Lee, Lee Wright. Well, right. uh, one the one time she, uh, I remember, uh, someone asked her to do something, and and, and whatever what whatever they asked her to do, Nurse Lee. She, she said, well, I would have you to know I am 
I do have license. I am a licensed nurse. So yeah, nurse, that's nurse Lee there. Um, a wonderful friend and a hard worker that was part of the color ward also, and then went into um, private uh, nursing and um, was an entrepreneur because at her husband's business where we went on 378, the right station where Mr. Dulce Connor would work in the morning. Mm -hmm. all that can and stuff like that. So <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to bring that up. Uh, I, I, I just, Miss uh, Nurse Wright was a wonderful, quiet, quiet worker. It took a lot to rock her boat, but when you did, she had a way of softly yes, putting you right where you needed to be. Now, Miss Winifred, Winifred, this picture, where is it? Where was it taken? I, that's her graduation, evidently from high school or, or, or school, because there's guys in it. Because when the nursing profession was very, very young, uh, there were only females. Um, hmm. They looked down on males for. Um, so it was only till later, much later, that um, the opposite gender joined the nursing role. So, so you think what, it's high school? Hmm, I, I'll have to find out from. Uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't Whittemore, I guess. No, because I think Nurse Lee, Nurse Wright came from down in the Charles, near going Charleston. I think she came from Estelle. Estelle. Yeah, 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 yeah because yeah, we're yeah. related to them. Mm -hmm. Right, 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 right. You're absolutely right, right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But she still looked like, oh, even on that picture, she still looked like Nurse Wright. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and I, you know, while you know, uh huh, yeah, would, would you remind the audience uh, who, who she's the mother of? Uh, and, I mean, yeah, that's the yeah. reason that, uh, that, that you know will associate their classmates or whomever uh, with, with that yeah. name. Yeah, uh, nurse, uh, right, daughter in law is Linda Floyd Wright, nurse Linda Floyd Wright who was a part of the Conway Hospital. Uh, uh, she worked on pediatrics, but Linda is a very hardworking, ambitious person too, and very smart. So she, and nursing has a lot of possibilities, is one of the administrators over at Walker Walk Center for Mental Health, but that's Mrs. Wright's daughter-in-law who was married to her oldest son, Arthur Jr. And Curtis Wright, is her baby son, and Edna is his wife. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's that's her her, her offspring's. And while while you're waiting to ask me another question, I'll share some more of the history <laughs> um, of, of of nursing. Uh, when I first started, a nurse could not wear pants. Mm -hmm. You had to wear white uniforms. You had to wear white hose. Mm -hmm. uh, your hair could not touch, go below your collars. You had to keep it up. You had to wear your cap. A little white cap. Yeah. It could have been a little one. It could have been whatever your school. You just had to wear a cap. You, you had to wear, uh, no, you couldn't wear any cap. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Your school that you graduated from had their own, adopted their own caps. Oh, I thought it was universal. Okay. No, ma'am. Yeah. No, ma'am. You can get into a lot of trouble. You just can't walk in and buy a hat and say, I like this hat <laughs> and I'm going to wear this hat. Right. You no, know, so I had myself because I went to two different schools. I had a, a cap for that one and a band. And, and and this one was my last one. That was my last one. So um no. And uh, I have had known nurses that were pulled off out of duty because they came on duty with dirty shoestrings and their shoes were not polished. Whoa. When we were at the desk and a doctor was coming toward the desk, we had to stand. We, we, we couldn't sit. You had to stand. Mm -hmm. You had to stand. And like I say, that was the past. 
when the day came and the time came and things changed, things had to change. No more eating in separate dining room, dining rooms. We, we went to schools, we went to colleges, we went to universities, and we said, spoke to the powers. I have met the requirements to run this facility. You don't have a, you do not have to have a white nurse mm -hmm. to be in charge, a head nurse to run this unit. I have the qualifications and I can do it. But you have to give me that chance. And those were some of the challenges. Right. Um, because um, there, there was a, a, a nurse that left the hospital and went away to Ohio because she had married and her husband's job took her there. And she was one of the head nurses and it was at the old hospital, but we were moving in April of 1982 over here to Merrill Trace. And she said, but one day I'll be back. And so um, one day she did come back, but at that particular time, a position was open for the unit coordinator for surgical. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to apply. And I said to one of our people, and she said to me, she said, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't apply because they're not going to give it to you. And I know they weren't going to give it to me because we fought too much and too long to get where we are. They ain't going to give you nothing. They're not going to give it to you. She's back now. Well, you want to earn it. And uh, they're going to give it to her. And so I say to um, new nurses that, um, that I've mentored and uh, uh, coming into the field, and I tell them that, I said, um, you know, I didn't have to make a believer out of the persons, of, the personal persons that were saying it to me. The believer was right here. I had to make a believer out of me first that I could do it. And I felt like I could do it. Mm -hmm. So I did. I was the unit co uh, coordinator on surgical wing. I, I did get the job. Wow. But it wasn't other people. The first person that said that to me, that I, you shouldn't apply. They're not going to give it to you. They're going to give it back to her. It didn't happen. Mm -hmm. It didn't happen. You have to work hard. Nursing was never a glorified profession. Not when you had to wash bedpans, empty emesis, and stuff like that. It was never glorified. But and I, I say, oh, uh, when a person says to me, oh, I couldn't be a nurse, you shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't. If you feel that way, you know, mm -hmm. you know, you know, because <laughs> everything isn't for everybody. That It takes a special person to be a nurse. It really does. It, 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 it does. It, it really does. It really so so um, if, I, if I may, may uh, deviate a little bit, um, uh, Nurse Anderson, um, what 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 do you think uh, the uh, the obstacles are today um, for um, not having enough uh, black nurses? And what you from was apparent apparently we don't have enough black uh, nurses. Okay, um, now it could be, somebody else may have a different perception. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, yeah, go ahead, please. Yeah, somebody else may have a different perception, but um, uh, it seems to be a general concurrence anyway. Or, the, or that uh, there's a void. There's a void there. I call it a void because um, you know there's been representations in a lot of cases, and not just at Conway Medical uh, Center, uh, but seemingly uh, all over in South Carolina. Um, yeah, yeah, and you could see all over the, over the United States. Okay. Um, so what do you what do you think? What, what's your take on that? Do you what what are some of the obstacles and the challenges you think that that have to be overcome before um, um, they can get uh, to, to be met? Well, I I heard you when you said you met with um what the CEO of at the hospital, right? right. And um uh. There are still nurses at the hospital 
that really qualify for certain positions. And um, one I uh, particularly have talked to recently, um, she said, they said I had, that you have to have another degree. She said, so I now I have another degree and I'm just gonna have to look for something else to do. But I said, have you, what have you applied for in this facility that you were turned down for? So she, she has not, uh, uh, he has not applied for any other position. And like I said, they're not gonna come up and ask you if you want it. And a lot of people come in with the expectation that um, you can walk in today and you're going to automatically, I mean, it, it, I mean, I don't care what kind of degree you have as far as hospital nursing, you have to start at point A. And it's mm -hmm. not easy. The hospital is a facility that's open 24 hours a day seven days a week. I guess that's a part that I, I can really appreciate. And that is uh, because somebody's going to be digging on my body. Somebody's going to be giving me a shot and uh, uh, and so forth and all the things that are going to impact my body. And you want the best, okay? You should demand. Yes, yeah. and demand. And it is, like I said, it's not an easy job. Um, and it's what an individual is willing to sacrifice because a lot of people that come back uh, 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 in the profession, they have families uh, and, and the hours, you know, and, and it's not easy. So it's, it's what you're willing to put in to get out in that sacrifice. And then you have to be a believer in yourself. And then you have to step up, step out and say, I'm that person. And you'll ne they'll never know until you uh, have the chance. Mm -hmm. Don't wait for them to give you, take that, step out on it, claim it. And I tell um, some of the, the people that I work with, because you one of the best unit secretaries that I've ever had on nursing tech, don't mean you always have to be that. Continue right. your education. Mm -hmm. Everybody mm -hmm. might have a dream, but that education is that key to open that reality. Continue on. Be the best person that you can be. You don't have to stop here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's it's just um, and like not like I said, not with all the schools around. When back in the day, <clears throat> when I first started, they didn't even have a site facility here. You had to go up to Columbia for your site rotation. Wow. For the rotations? You had to go to Columbia. Columbia. And then they, then they, after that, you know, some of the girls, like I said, went up to Florence and, and Francis and Mary. And then the, at the later date, they had a hospital or nursing something. Now they call it the lighthouse. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. It was something before then, but the students from Coastal could go there and not go to Columbia. Mm -hmm. So that helped a lot. And, and, and then we had Ori Georgetown Technical that opened its doors and made it a way where you could start and get your associate. And then there's CCU. So the opportunities are out there. You just have to, to reach for them, grasp them. So this is, this is me, this is for me. Mm -hmm. What you're talking about is so fascinating to me because I work with the, uh, a lot of the nursing students at Ori Georgetown Tech, uh, helping them prepare for that um, the professional development portion of what they're learning out there. And uh, right now, of course, they have rotation opportunities in all of the hospital systems around here, the, you know, certain doctor's offices, even with Ori County Schools they have the opportunity. And so when you talk about the fact that you had to, you know, had, once upon a time you had to travel to Columbia in order to complete that portion, which is necessary before you graduate, it makes me realize just how much uh, we take for granted when it comes down to our education 
and the strides that others had to make before us in order to get where they are and pave the way. And you're right about uh, people choosing career fields based upon their passion and what they can pour into it because nursing is definitely that type of field. You can't just wake up one morning and say, oh, I'm going to be a nurse. It's, there's got to be something ingrained in you, whether it's God given or just from positive influences like you had with um, Miss Ida and, you know, people who you just came to respect and you wanted to be like them. It, something had to, has to be poured into you to be a nurse. And so we always encourage the students to start at the CNA level. If you can start at the CNA level and you still want to be a, a, a nurse and, and move up the ladder, then you're made for it. You're made for it. Um, and, and a lot of our students, what we're finding lately is that they are doing that progressive or taking those progressive steps from CNA to LPN to RN. And then, you know, now, like, just like you said, I mean, you've seen it all come full circle that they have to now. Uh, leave Ori Georgetown Tech and go to Coastal or some other four-year institution to earn their BSN and then uh, eventually, you know, their master's or whatever. But um, when you think about all of that and how the times have changed, what do you think is the greatest challenge that nurses face? I know that there's a, you know, there's a challenge within our community that we don't have enough Black nurses, but what do you think is the greatest challenge that nurses face? Black nurses, all nurses, black all nurses. nurses, all nurses, mm -hmm. all nurses. I, 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 you know, it came to a point before I retired. Nurses kept saying, "I'm getting burned out." Yes, I got to get out. Mm -hmm. I can't take anymore. Mm -hmm. they're, they're asking more, requiring more, and like I said before. Um, from shaking down this mercury thermometer, putting it in set the saw to those computers, monitors, mm -hmm. and not, it, it, I know there was a time when they had a status list for patients. If they said people's oh, such and such a one is on the cr critical list, mm -hmm. that you know, uh, and that mean that person was in an intensive care unit. If you got a blood transfusion, you were in inti no more. People are on vents at home. Yes. Uh, people are being tool fed at home. The responsibilities are, are coming from the hospital and back to the home home setting. But nurses are, are saying, I can't take much more. I got to get out. Mm -hmm. I can't give no more. So, um, you know, and um, it would be interesting to me to find out how many nurses actually commit suicide mm -hmm. yes friends did got off duty at 11 o'clock drove down the road and leaned over a shotgun and killed herself my lord she, uh, but uh, uh but so i'm not sure if uh, all the changes are happening so fast and um the patients are requiring more um but they're saying that i'm just getting burned out I just can't take any more. Yep. And, and that's what we're hearing. And that could be one of the main reasons why we're seeing so few of us going into the profession, because, you know, it's it's not like we can turn our ears off and our minds off and, and not listen to, uh, you know, those I don't want to call them complaints, but those those gripes about the and the qualms that people have as far as the challenges are concerned. And I don't know what can happen to turn people's mindsets around about it. And that's why I think, you know, it really has to come from someplace deeper than just I want a, a good paying job or, I, you know, I want a stable job because you're never as a nurse, you're not going to be paid what you're worth. You're never going to. No, 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 no. But one thing you can, can be sure of that you will have a job. We'll have a job because the demand is there. We'll have a job. We'll have a job. We'll have a job. And at the point, at one point before I retired, it, the nurses' need got so great, you could almost say what you would work for. Mm -hmm. Instead of them saying, we have such and such a thing, an hourly, you, you could almost say what you would work for. That's right. I'm going to work here for this and this and this and this. Right, your own check. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that, so, but, um, 
And things change so fast with the medical profession. They do. It changed. I mean, it's, I mean, but the opportunities are great. Mm -hmm. The opportunities are great. Uh, you don't, you know, you start with the CNA, you start with the, and they make the greatest nurses. I mean, the ones that come, you can tell. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, then now we have the nurse practitioners, the anesthesiologists, the physicians. We have them in all colors also, but a lot of them started as nurses. That's correct. They started as nurses. They got their fundamental training, uh, inspiration, guidance, that their nursing foundation. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Are you sure uh, <laughs> you were the teacher? What like you were teaching um, nursing? <laughs> you, you sound like you have something to discuss. Okay, and, and information, and uh, and you're doing it in a, in a very, to me, in an instructive way. That um, you know, you could easily be mistaken for an instructor. Okay. Well, I'll I'll, I'll say that this. In order to, and when I went for a job interview one time, um, I said, I, I can't really teach probably the way you want me to teach because what I can do for these students is to share all the things that I have experienced. Right. That's going to be their teaching. That's going to be their teaching. Right, absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's going to mm -hmm. be their teaching. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I enjoy nursing and uh. To, to, to mention one of my other good friends, my sister, Connie Perkins, hopefully she's on. Connie was one of those trailblazers that from the early start, but like Nurse Hughes, she and Debbie Latson chose military also. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Connie, yeah, Connie uh, went into the service and uh, served her 25 years for this United States of America. Wow. extensively, even the Belgium and all of them. I don't want to be Indian, you know. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, yeah. Connie did and came back Fort Jackson, worked, uh, transitioned out of the military, and then worked as for DHEC because she was a nurse. Mm -hmm. Debbie transitioned from an air traffic controller in the United States Air Force, came to me on surgical unit work until she was ready to go to Emory Hospital in Georgia. Mm -hmm. Sister awesome. Debbie. <laughs> okay. Debbie Latson. Yeah, I know. Yeah, Debbie, Debbie Latson. And um, I, I really wish her well. You know, she was a neighbor. Um, and uh, she's a very, very uh, thoughtful young lady. I always thought she had a lot to offer. Yeah, so when we have the time on this earth to make a difference. And you say, well, why more black nurses? Why not? Our children need people they can imitate. I imitated Nurse Hughes until they thought she was my mother. Mm -hmm. um, they need people that look like them and talk like them so they think they can understand and they'll have a more, hopefully, a more desire to do more, to be more. If I can do it, so can you. But we got to be like that piece of fabric that's woven so tightly together that we care so much about each other and our well-being. We'll go that extra mile. Every child is our child. No child should be left out. That opportunity should be just as much theirs as it was mine. Mm -hmm. But you got to go out and grab it. You got to go out and get it. Yeah. And uh, there may be um, just that need within the village, like you said, uh, because as the saying goes, what they see, they will be. I believe that's how the saying goes. And, and maybe that's it. They're not seeing it enough in the village, you know, and, and that's a part of the issue. Uh, they can't see themselves in a particular profession mm -hmm. uh, or they don't see themselves in a particular profession, even teaching. They don't see, a, you know, themselves in the classroom. 
So yeah. Um, we, yeah, we've got to change that. We've got to figure out how to introduce them to it, even if it doesn't exist in the community today. Surely we have images and stories and, you know, wonderful, um, you know, uh, recollections like what you're giving us today. Just need to sit down with these young people and, you know, discuss nursing and other uh, industries as career options and show them people who've made it, who've done it. You know, if they see people like you and, uh, you know, uh, you know, other nurses and other doctors in the medical field, then they'll realize, well, yeah, I can, you know, Mm-hmm. There is a possibility, you know, possibilities. There is that possibility. Mm-hmm. There is that possibility. There is that possibility. And uh, I don't know how much more time we have, but it's, before Mrs. McQueen get on with her historical facts, I need to share one about um, when, when we were young. Uh, and that's why I, I know uh, I was going to be ordained to be a nurse. But when, when you know how in the summertime you would walk around with no shoes on, we, we did that. And if you accidentally stepped on some broken glass, cut your foot, it bled, they would say, wash it off. You had to either wash it off with pump water, well water, or the speaker, whatever you had. And then go there to the edge of the, under the house there, get spider web, put on that entire white piece of cloth, stop bleeding. If you had a infected bump arising, get a little piece of fat back, put on it till it come to a head. Then the great grands parents, you had to have clay because they were Indian descendants. Mm-hmm. Get that clay. If you sprain or twist to the ankle, make that plaster, put it on. That was their cast. That's right. The mm-hmm. medicine cabinet had turtle time. It had um alcohol if they couldn't find the alcohol we buy now stump hole whatever alcohol they had <laughs> and things like that but it was just kind of yeah. <laughs> but it wasn't it wasn't until i got into nursing training to realize what all that meant that um that back the salt in it was what we were making at the hospital saline That's right. to draw that impurities out. Mm-hmm. That spider web that, that they, the other people would say, older people, get that spider web, let's get it on there. The spider web had a coagulating agent in it to stop bleeding. And I didn't know that until I was in nursing training. They didn't have fiberglass of plaster Paris to make castles then. So they use clay to immobilize that spring or that joint or whatever. So um, yeah, the possibilities for the profession is still great. It's unlimited. If it's yours, go out there and get it. Take it. Don't wait for anybody to give it to you. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I hope our listeners are really listening to that because there are 30 million of us that don't have health insurance they gonna they need an alternative like that. Five words, fat back. I don't know what time with that leg. You use what you got when you got to use it. That's mm-hmm. all I can say. So mm-hmm. <laughs> thank you. This has been awesome. You know, um uh equal if you you don't uh you don't want to say anything more about the subject. See you you mentioned earlier about uh the, some of some of the um uh, careers. I think you didn't use the word career, but I, I thought I saw where you were heading to mm-hmm. about people in the medical field. Um, uh, hopefully you're aware and, and our viewers are aware that uh, statistically, or well, statistics show that we got some um, $9 trillion circulating among baby boomers with the entire baby boom. Not trillion, okay? $9 trillion. And they're going to be spending that. Okay? We got nothing else to do with it. I mean, they're going to be spending it. So um, health care, uh, or home health care, to, to me, to, uh, to, be, to be pivotal in, in forming, formulating a career for some young person, uh, don't you think? I, I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. They get, they're getting older. Yeah. And, and another thing uh, for the younger people, there are scholarships out there. Conway Hospital mm-hmm. has scholarships. 
Mm-hmm. You have to apply for it. That's right. Or read your sound check. I mean, they, they have there's scholarships out there, but you have to to apply for them. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay, yeah, we we've been in um, shower people with uh, as usual <laughs> shower with some of the best medical advice uh, and career advice, I believe. Have you heard in a long time? What do you think? Yeah, I, it's just absolutely wonderful um, hearing this firsthand. And right. I don't think that I've ever uh, heard Miss Winifred speak like this about her. Um, let's call her. Let's, let's call her Nurse Anderson from now. On. <laughs> I don't mind calling her Nurse Anderson. I call me what you like. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, but uh, I think I think it was fascinating and it was um, eye opening. And I was thinking to myself, how can I get her? I'm gonna have to call on you to, to talk to our nursing students. They need to they need to hear your your story, and right. I think it, and I think it will make them understand more about why it's important for them to to do what they're doing, but also how far we've come, and still we have a long way to go yeah. when it comes down to the medical field, especially nursing. Yeah. And uh, to Brother Elwood's point, it is so critical that we continue to cultivate. Uh, nursing professionals, because uh, the worst thing that could happen is that people start to lose interest in right. the field, and then you know what happens, and um, they lose all sense of hope. Of, yes, exactly. Hope, worthlessness, mm-hmm. hopelessness. Mm-hmm. Don't do that. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Don't do that. Yeah. So, Brother Edward, you want to take a, a commercial break and then or a little 30 second break and then come back and do uh, the Black History Moment and then we can wrap it up. And um, thank you all for asking me. Well, um, no, don't, please, you're not going anywhere. You, we might have some, some the, but I still need to thank you right now for, for picking me out from among, among many. Thank you. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so, lay back. <laughs> So you want to go into that 30 second break and then we do the black history yes, moment? Man, mm-hmm. we got some we got this moment. This moment is is, is, is mean something. This is some kind of moment here. Okay. Coming up. All right. But well, then let's make it happen. You ready? Okay. Here we go. Let's go right back. We're back. Yes, we are, Sister Joella. We are back. And I oh. uh, want to uh, thank oh. you for uh, giving us our Black History moment. I'm going to put the screen entirely on you and let you do your thing. Oh, listen, it is just like my sister and I would say sister growing up because Winifred and I were classmates. And we also grew up in that same area that she's been talking about, along with your mother, Sister April, and the family. And this is how we have grown into knowing about this history. So I think she did an excellent job. And I want to also congratulate her on just being persistent in working and doing different things in the community. So I'm just here to kind of uplift her and let her know that she has to come back on. She has to do the teachings. And Brother Emma was the one who thought about getting her on the air because in your, with your show with Dr. McIver, we are in a critical time period where every part of the community has to reach out and help us to understand more about this pandemic. And I thank Sister Marjorie McIver, our Sister Janar Fogg, Sister Marlo Frazier, Sister Hannah, and especially you, and I hope that I'm calling all the names uh, in terms of what we're doing to start with our children and getting them to think about careers. 
because that's what it's all about. So at this particular time, I'm just going to kind of reiterate what uh, Winifred said about the history of Conway Hospital and just going on the website for uh, Conway, the new Conway Medical Center. I just want to share with you about how the hospital care started in Conway. All right, here we have the first hospital that was started by a Dr. Homer Hollingsworth Burris. He saw the need for a hospital in the Ori County community. And I'm quite sure that during segregation, I don't know whether many of us went there, but just like Winifred was saying, we had the home remedies to help us. We had to know about going and getting the medicines from out of the field. So that was our way, even though we may have not been able to go to a hospital, but we took what we had and the village worked together to help care for our ailing family members, also to help with all of the other things that they had and what took place. Now, what took place was that it started off as a nonprofit medical center rooted deep in Ori County. And in the 1920s, a group of local physicians recognized the need for a hospital in the county and the application for a chartered for hospital, Conway Hospital, was filed with the South Carolina Secretary of State on November the 7th, 1928. At that at the time, the hospital was on Elm Street in the Old Birds building. Then soon, they outgrew that. Work began on constructing and furnishing a new building on 9th Street, a 9th Avenue, and with the accommodation for 31 patients in single rooms and wards on three floors. An open house for the facility was held on May the 30th, 1930. And that's the old hospital there where, as Sister Winifred said, Blacks had to go in that door. And we were greeted by our nurses, and of course, Dr. Kelly, who was our only Black physician at that particular time, would treat us. And as far as they were saying about, there were 31 patients in single rooms. We did not have that luxury. Some of us were like two and three in the rooms, but we got out. We were very proud of Nurse Hughes. And as we keep saying about her, we're going to try to have some information about her on in the future history about black nurses. Uh, all of the ones that Sister Winifred mentioned served us with dignity, with care. And that is why we always looked up to them in the community because we wanted to be just like they were and to hold that profession of caring. Then in 1982, Conway Hospital moved to its current location on Singleton Ridge Road. However, the growth did not stop in 2001. The hospital expanded the emergency department, obstetrical department, and added a three-story medical office building. A new patient bed tower opened in 2009, adding 71,000 square feet and 64 patient rooms, including critical and surgical care. Today, Conway Medical Center has 210 inpatient beds and is one of the country's largest employers with over 1,500 staff members. 
They are excited about the growth that continues at Conway Medical School as they continue to improve the overall health of our community by being a leader in health care. So you can go to the website and read this. And it's so wonderful to know that Dr. Winston McIver Jr. is right down the street from that. And when you walk into his office, as I've said previously, you get that kind of old fashioned loving care that he gives to his patients. And that's why we have to reach back and get some of our younger children to think about going into nursing. And parents, I'm going to give you a challenge to start when they're young. Get books. For instance, this book, which talks about first human body encyclopedia. This is what we want our children to begin reading. And while we're going virtual in terms of schooling, pick up a book with them and go through it and understand what is taking place with the human body. And I'm just going to do a little exercise with you. Would you move your neck from side to side, up and down? Do you know that we have seven bones in our neck, the same number as a giraffe? The top one allows you to move your hood head up and down. The second lets you rotate it from side to side, studying the skeleton. Now they marvel over the skeleton during Halloween and look at it, but the skeleton has so many, many features. We need it. And this is what we need to begin teaching our children. And maybe that will keep their interest into going into the medical profession. We want to always be able to share with them things about the heart. What happens? Why is the heart so important in the body as well as the other organisms? Talking about the cell. What is the cell? What are the parts? And this is what the scientists are doing now, parents. This is why they're working on this COVID-19 vaccine. This is what we have to do, prepare our children to want to go into the medical profession. And this is what we have to do in terms of letting them know that it is an honorable job to do and I'm praying that we continue to let our children know at a young age the importance of medicine. Thank you very much for listening. And Sister Winifred, we are going to be talking because you and I have to begin to let our children know more and more about the opportunities that are available for them in terms of the field of medicine. Thank you very much and God bless. Do you need to complete your diploma or get your GED? Stop putting your future on hold. Contact the Horry County Adult Education Centers today. With two offices in Conway and Myrtle Beach, you'll be well on your way to a new career. Conway Education Center is at 843-488-6200 or the Myrtle Beach Family Learning Center is at 843-839-5400. You can also visit the website at hcae.oricountyschools.net. Heating unit not working? Need answers right away? Call Quick Services Heating and Air Conditioning for comfort in a hurry. Quick Services Heating and Air LLC is the right choice for you. Call Kenya and Nina Keith at 843-488-1492. Residential or commercial financing available. You can also visit their website at www quickservicesHVAC.com. That's K-W-I-K services HVAC.com. Quick Services Heating and Air LLC, the right choice for you. Serving Ori County for over 79 years, Palmetto Chevrolet in downtown Conway has just what you need to find new roads. Come through and browse, make your selection, and find new roads right away. Palmetto Chevrolet, 1122 4th Avenue, downtown Conway. You can also visit palmettochevrolet.com or call the service center at 843-248-4283.
Palmetto Chevrolet, find new roads. Matthew and Beatrice Rue left a rich legacy of funeral home services in the capable hands of Atu and Tammy Williams. Ocean View Funeral Homes and Cremation Services with two chapels serving the Horry County area. They offer full service funeral and cremation services with no hidden fees. Call for details. The Conway Chapel is 843-248-5376. The Myrtle Beach Chapel is 843-916-8929. They offer affordable, professional, and caring full service packages. Ocean View Funeral Homes and Cremation Services. Okay, April. I just want to remind our audience, uh, especially our um, magazine recipients, Whittemore Community Magazine recipients, that um, and I did, uh, reiterate this about uh, the fact that we have not done any hard copy printing uh, for the past two or three months. And everybody's in a very understanding uh, um, uh, uh, position uh, from what I've seen. Uh, and that is because of the virus. We don't want to be passing it on. The, the hard copies go through many hands before it gets to the, to you, the recipient, who usually get them. And so we just want to be very careful about that. And uh, just, um, just to re reiterate that again, we haven't had any issues from anybody because uh, they, un they understood and they don't want to be catching the virus. OK, so hopefully um, you're still uh, getting the, um, uh, the, the magazine by way of email in our data bank. Uh, we, we can, you know, we send them out to you. And um, we've got some good feedback. You, you are enjoying them, uh, especially the articles that we've had in the, in the previously. So just wanted to, to say that uh, to all of our uh, listeners there again. OK, and thank you so much. And um, by the way, um, if uh, I just want to put up, um, you know, uh, a, a information regarding the uh, subscription and subscribing for the magazine. Um, uh, Sister Jenna Falk is our treasurer, as you can see, and um, it, it's originally for a printed copy of color. It's, it's seventy dollars a year. Uh, we have to send it by U.S. postage. And put, you know, it's ninety-five dollars a year. Uh, the electronic copy, which is majority of the people now are getting, uh, is just thirty-five dollars. But we've got some good re good um, feedback on those copies because it's very clear, and you can uh, see a lot more. Uh, with the electronic copy. So, you know, stick in there with us. And uh, if you want more information, you can just give me a call right there at 202-460-1390. Or you can call Ms. Jenna Falk, 843-248-9390. Uh, okay, 843-248-9390. And uh, she can uh, uh, address all, all the things that need to be clarified. All right? So, uh, April, how much time we'll have? We, we did the, we, uh, our famous nurse is still joining us, right? <laughs> nurse Graham, nurse. Um, we get ready to wrap it up right now, brother Edward. <laughs> so you're going to wrap it up right now. Yeah, wrap it up. Uh, we get ready to wrap it up. Wrap it on up. Uh, it's 830, 830. Wow, wow. Boy, yeah. time goes by. We're having fun. Uh, it does. Mm -hmm. Right, Ms. Anderson? Yes, sir. <laughs> Okay. Uh, you the, the last remark, um, Nurse Anderson? <clears throat> the last remarks yeah. that well, I have would be hang on in there. Do the be very best that you can. Don't let anyone tell you you can't when everything inside you said you can. So keep on trying. Oh, that sounds great. Fantastic. And uh Abel? Oh, I just want to thank everyone for uh, viewing the broadcast this week. Uh, thank you for tuning in, and we certainly appreciate it. And I've enjoyed listening to, uh, you know, this this history of Horry County, Black history Man, in Horry County. So oh. thank you so much. And you and I are going to get together real soon. All right. Right. So. See you next week, same time, 7 p.m. God bless. Mm -hmm. Bye -bye.